How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. We've got 22 days until the start of the 2020 season, and the Bears had their first 11-on-11 scrimmage today. Obviously, today is a day where they were supposed to be kicking off their preseason, but that being said, we're going to make amends with what we have and bring you guys all the coverage from day five of training camp. Welcome back to the show. I would like to say you guys crushed it on the support of the training camp video yesterday. We're going to be starting to put these out every day that the Bears practice and just bringing you guys the news that we have. So if you do want Bears content every day of the week, do us a favor, subscribe. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the start of the season. We're about 160 away. Also, click the bell for notifications whenever we post. And do us a favor, if you are returning to the channel, smash a like on this video because it definitely helps us out. I am your host, Chris Malpe, and today I am joined with my co-host, Parth Shaw. Parth, how's it going, man? You just moved into Indiana. How was, uh, how was the move in? Yeah, it was nice. Uh, it was a little long drive, like four and a half hours to get here, but... Here we are, I set up all my dorm stuff right now. Kind of exhausted, but recording another Bears video, so let's do it. Absolutely, and we're just about to get ramped up. Uh, hopefully we can find some time between classes to record stuff, but we've got a, a decent amount to uh, talk about today. Uh, the Bears upped their kicking competition. We've got some stuff to cover with David Montgomery. And then obviously the first day of 11 on 11 practices is also something that's very big. So... First off, just to go over the injuries, uh, Akeem Hicks was not present for a second consecutive practice with a quad injury. He's going to be day-to-day. Allen Robinson also went down uh, in warm-ups with an ankle injury, but uh, Matt Nagy said he should be okay. Uh, Anthony Miller also didn't practice. Same with Jalen Johnson and Robert Quinn, and Jimmy Graham got a Veterans Day rest. In regards to Anthony Miller, you know, um, they're just trying to take it slow with him. You know, I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. Miller's been a little bit injury prone in the past. But that being said, I've heard all good things about him so far in regards to how he's improved this offseason. Heading on to the quarterback competition before we get into any of the other moves that happened after practice, stuff we heard about. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we knew, and we'll make a full video on the quarterback competition probably tomorrow, honestly, but. Nick Foles did have a good day today. Uh, Trubisky had three days of good practice in a row. I'm not going to freak out about it. Neither is Parth. It's just it's just the preseason, uh, a.k.a. just training camp. But that being said, uh, Foles did throw the first interception of training camp. That being said, Eddie Jackson did pick it off. We know he is back in his free safety position. Uh, Trubisky saw a steady increase of accuracy through the first four practices. That being said, wasn't that great today. Uh, a couple passes behind and overthrown stuff we're used to seeing from Trubisky that we wouldn't want to see heading into year four. So we're just going to uh, put that to the side for now. Foles was slightly better, uh, as it seems. A couple people said Mitch was better, but that being said, NBC Sports Chicago, who's been reporting specifically on the quarterback competition since day one, gave a slight edge to Foles. Look, Parth, um, Zach Pearson of 24-7 Sports, as an ad comes back onto my computer, uh, said that, uh, you know, the quarterbacks haven't been too impressive all in all. It's, it's 3-2 Trubisky right now, but that being said, it hasn't been that impressive at all, uh, and it's not too promising. So what are your thoughts on this quarterback competition thus far? I heard it's been super tight. Like you said, it's 3-2 Trubisky's up um, by a day so far. But, yeah, they've both been very shaky, I've heard. Um, I've also heard that, like, it doesn't look good if either one is in the team starting. Or I've also heard that Trubisky's upped his accuracy here and there, and Foles has been hitting his deep balls. So, I mean, I think I bet it's super tight. Um, I'm pretty sure Matt Nagy's going to have a tough decision to make. Uh, if I was making the decision, I would definitely not know what to do at this point, especially because it's hard to see um, with no fans allowed. But um, I'm excited to see who can win it out at the end of the day. We still got, I think, two weeks uh, yeah, before they make Yeah, three the weeks, but you would you would assume that they would make a decision going into yeah. game week. Yeah. yeah, game plan for a week before. So I think t- t- uh, we, we'll, we'll find out who's up in the competition, I think, in a week or so, um, who's starting to pull away. 
and I, I really don't know who's going to pull away because they're both playing well, and then, then the one plays bad, and they go back and forth. So it's yep. no got that consistency that we've been wanting at that quarterback position. Yeah, just to touch a little bit more on the quarterback competition, as I said, we'll make a, a video talking about the entire week as a whole uh, coming out tomorrow. That being said, I talked to J.J. Stankovitz of NBC Sports, and he said, uh, you know, one – promising thing for Nick Foles is that he you, you know we, we all knew coming into this that Trubisky would have better chemistry with everyone and he told me that he thinks Foles is getting his feet wet uh, a little bit uh he, he's been a little bit streaky and so has Mitch but we're used to seeing streaky Mitch I hate to say it but that being yep. said Stankovitz did tell me he, he thinks Foles might be able to pick it up in week two uh, just after getting his feet wet, getting to know the playbook a bit more. Obviously, we knew Foles coming in knew a lot about this playbook. But that being said, chemistry is still huge. So I would say it, going into week two, it was a good week for Trubisky. But that being said, uh, if Foles can get more comfortable, this thing could get very, very interesting. Heading into the next story of the day, David Montgomery. Uh, this is a very interesting one, a very funny story. So David Montgomery has said that he sees a, uh, a consistent speed uh, difference in his speed. Uh, you know, that's very good. He's been able to diet this entire offseason. He was at about 225 pounds. He's now down to about 218. Uh, he said he isn't that sore right now. Sometimes when you cut weight, you get hit hard. You can be a little bit sore. But um, he said that he's been able to refocus on balancing, conditioning, strength, and mobility, and that he's never felt better as a professional. Uh, a funny quote that he says is, whenever I felt the craving for a Krispy Kreme donut, which you can definitely find in some parts of Illinois, uh, I definitely have to go back on the day. I had to fight the urge not to go get one. So, uh, yeah, we see that David Montgomery uh, isn't eating as poorly, making better choices for himself, feeling a lot more slick, agile, and speedy. Parth, I want to ask you, what do you think? David Montgomery, year two, I mean, obviously we all expect that he's going to be able to get better, but it looks good seeing that he's he's slimming down himself. So what do you think he's going to be able to accomplish here in year two? I think it's great that he's slimming down. You know, uh, last year he was a little... I guess you could say a little chunky, uh, a little slow at times, uh, getting out of his breaks and stuff. So seeing Montgomery slim down is definitely going to help the Bears' offense. Last year, we couldn't get their pass game going or the run game, which definitely hurts Trubisky or even Foles, who likes to play off the play action as well. So if David Montgomery can get it churning, uh, the offense can at least be a lot better next year. Absolutely. Uh, David Montgomery is definitely someone who's going to have to step up for the Bears if they want to have a successful run and pass game, because obviously, you know, a good running back is a quarterback's best friend. We don't know who the quarterback's going to be. It's way too close to call right now. But that being said, it's exciting to hear that David Montgomery is slimming down and feels really, really good. Finally, the last news on the day, and probably the most intriguing, is that the Bears added Cairo Santos, someone who was formerly in Chicago in 2017. Before we get into his stats, he was signed by the Bears uh, in November of 2017, after the Bears cut Connor Barth, he missed his first field goal attempt as a member of the Bears, which was a 54-yarder, and then he was placed on injury reserve and eventually cut after hurting his groin in a pregame warm-up in Week 13 against the San Francisco 49ers just three seasons ago. So Cairo Santos is back in Chicago. You know, not the greatest kicker of all time, i got to be completely honest with you. He's coming out of a 2019 year with the Tennessee Titans where he went 4 for 9, only 44%. But that being said, you know, uh, back further in his career, he's obviously an undrafted free agent. When he was signed by the Kansas City Chiefs, he was pretty solid. You know, 25 for 30, 30 for 37, and 31 for 35 before coming to Chicago, and his career really started tanking when he came to the Bears. Parth, does this worry you at all about Eddie Pinheiro, or do you think this is just a move strictly to bring in some competition? I think it's just another move to bring in some competition. Uh, I mean, we haven't heard reporters say anything about Pinheiro struggling or anything yet or as much as I've seen so uh, I think Santos is just another guy to you know compete with Eddie I mean Eddie beat out the other kicker that we brought in Rummy's Ahmed uh, so yeah. I think Eddie will beat out this guy uh, Cairo Santos has been a veteran kicker for a long time but I got full trust in Pinheiro uh, I know he posted about saying that he wants to be here in Chicago forever he loves his organization and everything, and I, I love Pinera as well. I think he's a great kicker for the future, so hopefully he can keep doing his thing. I mean, just, just comparing this to what some other teams do, I mean, uh, if you remember last year, the uh, the Baltimore Ravens brought in some competition for Justin Tucker, and they just, brought in, yeah. I'm sure you'll recognize this name, Kari Vedvik. Um, <laughs> he came in, and he made all four of his field goals in the first, uh, in the first preseason game they had, including a 55-yarder. 
And then, you know, he's kind of a kicker that got hype and bounced around and hasn't been doing great ever since. You know, he's been a punter and a kicker on different teams. He was just cut by Buffalo and claimed by the Panthers. Who knows what position he's going to play. We're getting off topic, but basically my point is it's just a competition move. No, I don't want Cairo Santos to be the kicker for the Bears. I I know he has not the greatest uh, history in the past, uh, especially. Uh, I trust Eddie Pinheiro. You know, this also might be Pinheiro went down with an injury and the Bears need someone just in case he goes down again. Obviously, we know he dealt with a hamstring injury. But that being said, um, you know, Pinheiro is going to be here to stay. Uh, He was pretty solid last year. I think he was 23 for 28. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think there's no problem in bringing in someone else, number one, for competition, and number two, in case... Eddie falls through and deals with those hamstring injuries yet again. But that being said, you know, Pinheiro has slimmed up, gotten stronger this offseason, so I'm excited to see what he can bring. Maybe he's injured right now. Nobody really knows. Uh, Reporters haven't seen too much from the special teams unit. But that being said, thank you so much for tuning in to episode number 67 of Uncut. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, BearedDown.com. We're posting articles every other day, I would say, on there now trying to get you guys as much training camp coverage as possible. If you would like to see sneak peeks of the podcast or uh, help us, you know, sometimes we need help deciding on what to post. So if you want to give us some suggestions, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Bear Down. And you can also find me and Parse fan pages down in the description. Those are some great follows as well. Parse Shaw, 22 days, man. Uh, We're getting close. Any last words? I'm a little excited about, I'm super excited about football season coming back. Also, Cubs-White Sox game two tonight. You know, my White Sox stole game Yeesh, one. Yeesh, man. Uh, that was tough. You know, we, yeah, we, got, we killed the Cubs last night. I know probably most of you guys watching are probably Cubs fans, so probably don't like listen to me saying that, but <laughs> go, go White Sox tonight, too. Absolutely. The Crosstown series is a good one, and the Cubs will look to even it up tonight. Uh, you know. Cubs fans were in White Sox fans' ears for a while, and and I'm proud of the White Sox. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of the White Sox, but their time has come, and you have to respect it. So, Bears fans, do us a favor. We're going to keep the trading camp coverage coming. Do us a favor and continue to keep your masks on. Stay safe, and as always, bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.